Now every team getting a couple buys because of the nine-team league. Saskatchewan coming off, obviously refreshed and looking like a completely different Rough Rider team. Free buy. Ray, trouble with the snap, let it go, a wobbler. And it is caught by Maurice Mann. Seven-yard gain up near the 15-yard line. His fourth catch of the night in his second debut with the Argos. And you, you talk about that bye week, and I think the thing that's been most unique about it this year is we're so used to the bye happening around mid-season and at a time when players are maybe starting to get beat up and you're hoping to get guys back after the break. and It's, it's kind of a wear and tear thing, a rejuvenation thing. This year, I'm not sure that the break for most teams has really been beneficial because it comes so early. It's at a point where you're trying to get into a rhythm and right after training camp, but there's a bye every week. The team's just rotating through as, as far as who has the bye. So for the teams that have had it thus far, really it's almost coming too early in the year when you're, you're on the heels of training camp and you're still trying to get familiar with each other and still get into a bit of a groove. But in many cases, it can be a case of, of what you do with it. And you look at a guy like Darian Durant, who really chose to, to use the break to get better, get back, get back on his groove, get back on, on his game. And no, the numbers aren't phenomenal, but Darian Durant, I would say, has been better tonight than he was in the previous couple of games. Here he goes around the left side, and he'll hook slide. I guess the danger now for the Riders is this game slowly creeps to the out of reach territory is how long do you stay with Darian Durant particularly a guy who's trying to find his rhythm again with some new teammates or do you sit him down go to the sideline and go to your backups to finish this up well you if the game continues in this direction I would anticipate that you'd see Tino Sinceri for at least a couple of series once you get to maybe the last half of this fourth quarter especially with Darian Durant hobbling a little bit. First and 10 again, Anthony Allen gave way this week to Will Ford as the feature tailback. Anthony Allen, a guy who had been productive, big back, a little bit different for sure than the man that he was attempting to replace in Corey Sheets. But nonetheless, put up pretty good yardage through the first couple of weeks of this Canadian Football League season. Scored three touchdowns in those weeks, but Ford has three tonight. Look out, Darian Durant. Now he heaves it into the end zone and no one home. Tristan Opala Ugo in the backfield. Uh, Opelo Ugo hurtled over Anthony Allen, the back, who was in protection on the back side of that slide scheme. Guy who had three sacks last week. Very athletic player out of Fresno State. Fresno supplying a pretty good crew of defenders mm -hmm. to the Canadian Football League this season. Rookies Opelo Ugo and Logan Harrell on the Argos D-line, as well as middle linebacker Travis Brown in Ottawa. Chris Milo missed one tonight, but adds to his tally. 34 to 9. Missed his first, but hasn't missed since. Riders rolling at home tonight. Ricky Ray has been seeing a lot of green tonight. Way too much of it. Only nine points on the board. Hasn't been able to find the end zone with his offense. Chris Milo kicks this off after another successful field goal. 34 to 9 the score. And the Riders doing to the Argos what the Argos did to them a few weeks ago when they won 48 to 15 and not stopping. But they've been stopping everything Ricky Ray has thrown their way and the Riders tonight have a chance to go to two and two Dwayne and you better get to two and two in the West right now because <laughs> of the way that division is rolling yeah the race is on front runners Calgary Edmonton Winnipeg all with four wins already you don't want to get 
in too big a hole, even though there's a lot of football left to be played. Argo's in danger of falling to one and four, and Ricky Ray tumbles forward near the 40-yard line. And this is probably not something that Michael, that uh, Scott Milanovic wants to see right now. Well, and we asked the question with Darian Durant as to how long he continues in this ball game. You wonder the same thing about the Toronto Argonauts. At what point they decide that they're not coming back. He said the, the emphasis in the second half is on protecting Ricky Ray at some point. Your best way to protect him is to sit him down and get Trevor Harris in the game. Here come the Riders again. And Adams has the catch in the first down. Again, Darvin Adams, his second catch of the night, his 11th of the season. And his first touchdown last week in that loss to the Ottawa Red Blacks, last second field goal. One of the guys who has to continue to step up. He's going to have a lot of opportunity. Here comes Brackenridge again. There goes the football to Anthony Coombs. Coombs, who again is getting a baptism under fire in his first year. I think they wanted to bring Anthony Coombs along a little bit slower early in the season, particularly he's a first-year player behind Andre Dury. And, of course, Dury got hurt, and Coombs forced into play a lot more. You know, one of the things the Argos like about Anthony Coombs is the fact that he has committed himself to being a, a student of the game. He's having to learn a couple of positions as most of his reps through training camp were at running back rather than at slot. Second and four after that gain of six. Over the middle. And again, Faison is drilled. The football is loose. Saskatchewan has it. Macho Harris is the man. Strips it from Jared Faison. Tribulations and turnovers for the Toronto Argonauts continue tonight here in Regina. Well, Matt, the fifth on the night fumble by Jared Faison, who had made a terrific play up to that point. Nice catch and run play, eluding a couple of defenders, but failure to secure that football going into contact at the end. Gives the Rough Riders their fifth turnover of the evening. Look out now. It's Will Ford again. Down the sideline. His biggest game. Three touchdowns tonight. And Will Ford, who hasn't played this season, hasn't played since last year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, just picked up, is certainly a candidate for Offensive Player of the Week. Now over 100 yards, 105 yards for Ford. Sparkling debut. Arian Durant staying in the ball game. You wonder how much longer. Shea Emery putting a stop to Ford this time after half the first down yardage. And Will Ford won the 100-yard game for Winnipeg last year here already, registering his first as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Even that last play illustrating terrific job done by the offensive line, the right tackle, Ben Heenan. A tremendous effort to get leverage, get on the outside shoulder of his defender. To get things opened up on the outside. He was running back for Darian Durant rubs it in some more to the end zone, and Jalil Carter almost picked it off. Looking for Taj Smith. Again, the Argos back on July 5th beat the Riders by 33 points. The spread right now is 25. And Darian Durant afforded all kinds of time for his protection on that one. One that Jalil Carter would like to have back. So, Milo again. Two of three on the night. Missed from 41. Six of nine now on the season. This one comes 
from the 43 yard line. Has not made a field goal outside the 40 this season until now. With eight minutes to go. The Riders poised to even their record at two and two. CFL Fantasy is now a reality. Go to tsn.ca slash CFL Fantasy to set your roster for a chance to win a trip to the 102nd Grey Cup in Vancouver. And a Joseph Abood suit from Moore's. Look at that guy. Every pick counts. Make yours today. A lot of happy Rider fans tonight. This town going off. Trevor Harris coming in. Ricky Ray done for the night. Argos were done for the night early. And what could only be deemed a forgettable performance here in Saskatchewan. Ricky Ray, 23 of 35. The number that stands out for a guy who rarely throws him. Two interceptions in this ball game under constant pressure from that Saskatchewan defensive line. He's taken a number of hits, a whole lot of hurries, a couple of sacks, fumbles along the way as well. Tough night for the Argo quarterback. Harris steps up, lets it go. Very tight pass for Jeremiah Johnson in close confines, but he makes the catch. Only two yards on the play. Kick unit returns. Busiest guy tonight's been Swayze Waters. Those are barring some sort of miracle, but it fall to one and four. All four teams in the East will have one win. Tristan Jackson has some room. Penalty flag. For a moment, he had a crease and some daylight. And Tristan Jackson broke into the league. He was deemed one of the best returners out there. And of course, started playing defensive back and cornerback. During this the is return, going against Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Number 51. 10 yard penalty, first down. Tristan Black working against Ivan Brown of the Argos on that one. So Darian Durant is also done for the evening. And into the game. Comes back up Tino Sinceri. Three of four on the season. Hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. Out of Pittsburgh University. Former Panther. Pass it off to Will Ford, and that baseball cap normally means that your quarterback is done for the evening. Nine of 17, 155. Not remarkable numbers by any stretch for Darian Durant. But they didn't need to be. No, but then again, you look what their offense did. Match those numbers up with what Will Ford did and the way they executed. And that's what they were talking about during the bye week is execution. And I'll emphasize again, Darian Durant has had a whole lot of shuffling going on among his receivers, too. Sinceri almost throws it into the arms of an Argo. Almost picked off. Jermaine Gabriel had his gloves on it. Well, Dan DePalma, a guy who actually played a little bit of defensive back as well as receiver in college, turned defensive back on this one, but the Argos Quick inside swim by Opalugo to get to Sinceri. A hit causes that throw to sail. The Riders are throwing a challenge flag here. Even with a wide margin right now. Big lead. They're throwing that challenge flag on possible interference call here. So they will look at this. Saskatchewan is challenging the previous play for defensive pass interference. It will be reviewed. And for our viewers in the United States on ESPN2, DPI, defensive pass interference, can 
be reviewed. You can throw a challenge flag the first time ever that has been instituted in the Canadian Football League and professional football for that matter. And he's got a point. Yeah, you see the right hand tugging on the back of that shoulder. Now here it comes the... The ongoing debate, I suppose. Is the contact enough to prevent the receiver from getting to the football? Is that what stopped him from getting there? Was he going to reach that ball? It's a quick decision. There's no question there was a grab. And our answer is... After review, there's no physical evidence to support defensive pass interference. The ruling on the field stands. Third down. Do you like that call? Based on what you've seen so far and the precedents that have been set? I'm not sure that the precedents have been really set yet in terms of establishing a consistent standard. I mean, clearly he's got a hook on his jersey. You, can, you can make the case that had he not had it on his jersey, he gets into that football. I mean, and this is where the, the debate will go on as far as the instant replay review on pass interference. There he goes again. Lazy rules again from Josh Bartell. Mike Bradwell returning kicks now. Cargo's injury list continues to grow. And everybody has to play everywhere. Now the Whitecaps FC Soccer continues on TSN tomorrow when the Whitecaps face FC Dallas at BC Place. Live coverage underway at 5 Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here on TSN. Watch live on tsn.ca or TSN Go. Argo's trying to get a little confidence here before they pack up and head home with a loss. Next week, they head to Montreal. Big battle in the East. Every game in the East will be important now. Serious arrears of what the Western teams are doing. Trevor Guyton in on the play again. Yeah, big Trevor Guyton out of Cal takes his turn. Being the member of the defensive line wreaking havoc. I'm stuffing the run attempt from the Argos. Riders next week. Head to Ottawa. Four and a half to go here. And what has become a manhandler. Bradwell. Christian Jackson dropping him up near the 47-yard line. Seven-yard gain. Short of the first down. Looked like they thought about it briefly going for it, but Swayze Waters and the punt unit are going to come on for the Toronto Argonauts. Two early turnovers in this game. If you're just joining us, the Argos' first two possessions gave the football away. Riders at an early 14-0 lead, and the newest Rough Rider, Will Ford, just signed this week. Released by Winnipeg. Has had three touchdowns. There's a fumble into the Argos' arms. Shane Herbert has it. Well, the Riders return the favor. And Shane Herbert out of Wilfrid Laurier comes up with his second fumble recovery of the season. Christian Jackson losing it right here. He did the stripping and he did the scooping. Shane Herbert at standing corner during his time at Laurier. Here's Jim Daly, the special teams coordinator for the Argos. There's something positive for them. Daly, a former coach here in Saskatchewan. Harris stands in and throws down the sideline for Maurice Mann, who looks like he has it. No, incomplete. Working against Ron Williams and Tyron Brackenridge. For a moment, it looked like Mann had made an outstanding grab. I'll say this, if you're looking for positives, nonetheless, from a Toronto Argonaut point of view, Man never had sole and firm control of this football before he went out of bounds. You see he's still kind of juggling it there as Ian Williams went to the ground. Williams did a nice job to take that ball away. Otherwise, 
that might have been ruled a catch. Challenge from the Argo sideline. Argos are going to challenge back. Nothing to lose at this point. Toronto is challenging the previous play as it was a completed pass. We will review. Well, nothing to lose from an Argo point of view. It'll be a big play for you. But it looks to me like Maurice Mann almost kind of has this one more between his arms. As you see it get through his hands there, and Rod Williams' hands on the inside, that's what allows him to pull it out. So to me, it didn't really appear that Maurice Mann ever really had complete control of this football before he's out of bounds. There you see, he didn't catch it cleanly. And it's certainly being juggled on the way down. Back judge Dave Gatso right there along the sideline. Getting a good clean view. Yeah. Before they hit the ground. Again, a very quick verdict here. After review, the receiver failed to maintain control of the ball as he hit the ground. Therefore, the ruling on the field stands. 